All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from KHUX Nation. And in today's episode, we're gonna be going over the latest dev update that has been announced for Magic the Gathering Arena. Um, a lot of this is stuff that we kind of already expected, but they're just kind of giving more details as, the, as to how exactly rotation is going, going to occur, what type of changes are gonna be happening, um, how the new historic format is going to work yada yada okay so that's kind of the bulk of today's video and i'll begin my thoughts and whatnot as we go along um, as you can see right here i'm currently on their blog post discussing it um, this we kind of already knew essentially as of uh once the new throne of eldrain set comes out uh from that point onwards only sets starting from guilds and ravdica and onwards will be legal for standard okay and then from that point onwards as well anything before guilds or ravnica will be considered legal for the historic format only all right this is not including any like special key events and stuff that happen within the game okay that's not including that um now Along with this, that does mean as well that if you happen to have the current mastery pass, uh, so we'll just go ahead into the game so I can show you. So you know how like uh, you earn experience each day and week and such in order to uh, level up the mastery pass, the core set master, whatever it's called. <clears throat> because of the fact that the new set will be coming, that also means that the current core set mastery is going to be ending within about a month as well. Uh, the last day to earn ex EXP and rewards and stuff is going to be on the 26th of September. So you have roughly a month uh, to help complete your mastery pass before the next season comes in. Okay, so just throwing that out there. Um, and with that in mind, if you play every single day up until the 26th of September, uh, you should be able to obtain roughly 29 levels. I did the math. You should be able to do, uh, gain at least around 29 levels uh, up to that point, assuming you play every single day uh, starting from today. Uh, keep in mind, this is not including any free EXP events uh, that might happen between during that time. Okay, you know, uh, the ones that like when you get your first win, you get a thousand exp and stuff it's not including that so you can still potentially earn a little bit more than 29 levels during that time frame as well okay um in my case i've pretty much been playing almost every single day since the mastery pass has been available uh and i'm at level 72 so at least in my case i should definitely be able to barely reach oh my god holly my dog <laughs> I should be able to barely reach the 100 mark uh, level by the end of the Mastery Pass, which is kind of egregious, the fact you have to literally play every single day just to barely reach the, the highest level. It's kind of, I kind of don't like that. Um, hopefully within the community, we can put in more feedback. Because realistically, when they made the whole announcement about how EXP worked and such, um, they, didn't, they didn't legitimately fix the issue as to uh because one of the main issues about the whole exp that came out was the fact that you can only get a certain a limited amount of exp each day it's not like you can get exp every time you win a game or anything like that all right um all they did was make it so it's a lot easier to gain more exp more often but they didn't actually like do what we wanted all right um in other words, they took two steps forward and one step back, but there's still one step forward. That's kind of the ideal ideology. I don't know how to pronounce that correctly. Uh, in motion right now. Hold on, give me a second. All right. So continuing on, like I mentioned before, after rotation happens, only sets from Guild of Ravnica and onwards will be legal within standard. Uh, starting with the uh, Throne of Eldraine that will be coming out next set. Okay, so moving onwards. All right, 
they did mention that there's going to be no collection resets so any cards they currently have right now that would be rotating out of standard they're not going to be reset you will still have those cards because of the fact they're still going to be legal to be able to play with for the uh, historic format so that's worth mentioning okay your, your cards are not going to go away you'll still be able to play them they just won't be standard legal legal you will still be able to use them for historic though okay uh let's see okay so they're making some changes to how rewards and events are going to be happening as well this i found fairly interesting i didn't really know how to feel about this um so essentially starting on september 9th they're gonna start having some events where you can get 200 xp every two wins all right as well as the fact that starting on the 26th of september so basically uh once the master pass expires and such or in the new set comes out they will start including uh login bonuses from what i can tell all right i was kind of expecting this considering the fact that they're they're kind of treating the game similar to how like a mobile game is all right where you know you have a you have like a well basically it's like a battle pass like it is for for fortnite um and it is a free-to-play game it like to truth be told card games typically feel very similar to how mobile games feel so it's it's not outside of the spectrum of what i was expecting so uh at the very least though they mentioned that for when you log in each day uh you get 10 rare individual card rewards uh it's not 10 rares each login i'm pretty sure it's like you get one rare amongst like a certain collection of them, okay um and i'm pretty sure they'll elaborate on that later on uh as well as the fact that kind of i, I don't understand what the renewal is exactly don't quite understand what that is uh but they'll go into it i guess that we well they'll they explain it right here uh let's see these events will have no entry fees they're basically just normal events let's see every two consecutive wins will reward you 200 mastery exp we mentioned that already let's see uh la, la, la. rewards players who've logged in to mtg arena prior to september 6 26 will also have a special renewal gift waiting for them 10 rare or higher individual card rewards from the standard 2020 sets including throne of eldraine not too bad okay uh, a new set release also means a new set mastery and our new renewal gift extends to this as well we'll be adding additional rewards to the first 25 levels in the form of uncommon uh icrs what is that again individual card rewards and booster packs and these additional rewards will be available to all renewal gift recipients no mastery pass required so that's that's a nice bonus they're they're, they're trying to add a little bit more value uh to the free to play aspect okay at least for the fir like initial first quarter of the mastery pass so it's a good thing it's a good thing at least helps make players feel a little bit more value like it, it's uh because as it is right now as the master pass currently is it's it's how should i word it it doesn't feel very satisfying being a free-to-play player essentially because you only get a reward essentially once every two levels more or less uh and that can be kind of slow sometimes all right and, and you only get a pack and that's it which isn't too bad but it's it can still feel kind of slow as of right now so the fact that they're adding a little bit more value at least for the first 25 levels up to like right here um for the free-to-play players that is definitely a whole lot better in my opinion a lot more consumer friendly all right again these renewal gifts are only available for players who have logged in prior to september 26 to help kickstart their new standard collection we're not joking when we say now more than ever is a great time to play so basically if you're watching this video just make sure you log in you start playing the game before the standard rotation happens <laughs> it's fairly straightforward just li literally even on the 25th just literally create an account and start playing the game on the 25th and bam you'll have access to 10 rare uh rare cards 
from a combination of standard 2020, including Throne of Eldraine, which is pretty nice. Any any new cards you can get from the newest set is always a, is a nice bonus. All right, so Historic. So they mentioned that they're going to make some changes to Historic. All right, uh, when we first... At the time we announced that Historic would only be available as a best of one play queue. And there weren't any plans to add additional events, older sets, or ranked queues at the time. And today we're saying that most of that has changed, okay? Which, in my opinion, is for the better. I kind of was expecting a little bit more than that. Um, in my mind, I'm here thinking more along the lines of, like, how maybe, like, Commander or, like, other formats like Modern uh, and Legacy and stuff might be played. Uh, it would be nice if they added more of a multiplayer functionality to magic arena just because of fact especially me myself like i am a hardcore commander edh fan uh i used to play it competitive both competitively and casually like a lot way more than i care to admit uh and i honestly i feel like one of the biggest things that magic arena is sorely missing is some sort of like multiplayer or uh social aspect if that makes sense one of the, at least for me as a magic player one of the key things that makes magic gathering so fun and addicting is the social factor being able to interact with friends especially if you play edh or commander at all whatsoever um that's one of the main attra uh, like attractive selling points for edh is the fact that you get to like play with multiple other people uh, you get to like do a little politics and you know befriending others making enemies and everything and whatnot That's one of the that's like half the game in my opinion um, And because of the fact that magic arena is only single player Essentially you only play against one other person. And that's it and you don't really want to Or at least you can't talk to them as it is right now um, Nor would you want to say too much either just because of the fact that the game already takes takes care of any all of the uh, comprehensive rules for you there's not really too much you would want to say to your opponent in the first place, just because of the fact that you're trying to win. What could you possibly say to your opponent in order to, like, help win, if that makes sense? Like, you wouldn't want to help your opponent. So, I, I would really like some type of social aspect in the game, if possible. Um, and I know some others have complained about that a little bit as well. Uh, anyways, rewriting Historic. So after considering the feedback, they noticed some things. Okay, we went back to the drawing board and decided on some core criteria for our non-rotating format historic. It should feel distinctive from other constructive formats, namely standard. Good. Okay, it's a good starting point. There should be some competitive aspect to it. Ranked, essentially. Finding a balance for the long-term health of Magic Arena. That's a good thing. Okay. But with great criteria comes great complications. How do we balance existing player collections while still making a format accessible to players who want to jump in? How do we feel make it feel distinctive from standard while balancing the development time needed to add older cards? If we add newer player new player cues for a brand new format, what does that mean for the quality of matchmaking? Yada yada. Okay, so they're just kind of theorizing. Okay, so for point one, how can we make historic provide a fun, unique digital experience that didn't just feel like old standard? Well, the answer of add new cards to historic may seem rather obvious, but we landed on a pretty awesome way to leverage MTG's Arena's digital playground and growing catalog of magic cards. Starting in November, we plan to add new cards in MTG Arena from across magic's history for play in historic formats and events. No restrictions on set types, rarities, basically no restrictions. We plan to do this regularly. Start so in a sense, from what it sounds like, they're basically, historic is almost essentially kind of having a mix of commander or maybe not commander maybe it's just legacy <laughs> i don't i don't know like i mean commander you can only have one copy of each card in a in a deck and it's a hundred card deck uh including the commander so it's not completely commander but it's going in lines with that or more, I guess, like, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Basically, they're going to be adding older cards that have not been included in MTG Arena yet. So we could go all the way back to, like, the Ice Age set if they really wanted to. That's basically what we're trying to get at. We could go, we could have Kaladesh, uh, you know, Return to Ravnica, older sets can basically be back into the set. Uh, 
into the game. Uh, they're interested in player feedback. So if you have feedback, make sure you give it to them. One for the history books. On to bullet point number two. How can we add a competitive aspect to historic? If we enter it at a ranked queue, you'd be correct. Obviously, that's the most obvious answer. Uh, we will add a historic ranked queue for best of three play in December. Again, expected. Although the ranked queue will contribute to the same constructed rank as standard, historic decks will only be matched against other historic decks. Initially, we plan to offer a historic rank queue for limited time. Again, kind of expected. Uh, let's see. One other way we're looking to expand an historic play is by planning to hold at least one historic event per month starting in November. Monthly events should range from historic versions of Singleton and Popper to potentially entirely new ways of playing. So in a way, it's basically almost the same exact, like they're, you know, the events we currently have as of right now, it's going to be almost the exact same thing, just geared towards historic rather than, yeah, geared towards historic decks rather than geared towards standard decks. So it's kind of along the same lines. All right. All right. Historic collections. And this is, they mentioned it's the trickest to navigate. We want to ensure that players new to magic can still learn the ropes and start their collection through standard and draft as the primary methods of play with historic available to seasoned players looking to explore more of magic's rich history. We also need to look at the long-term impact histor historic would have on MTG arena as a whole, as we move towards supporting it as a true non-rotating format. Basically the same issues that they have with the game for other formats like Legacy, Modern, Commander, especially Commander, my god. Um, the same problems, that the issues that they have trying to balance those formats, they'll have the same issues trying to balance Historic. Um, which just makes sense. Whenever you add in older cards into a, a, a format, um, it just means there's a lot more easily crazy interactions that can happen in the game. So just kind of makes sense it makes it a little bit more difficult and and there's a like exponentially greater amount of different interactions that could possibly happen so yeah makes sense a lot of issues are going to occur uh let's see and while historic sets are currently still available for purchase in the store we plan to limit historic sets to 40 pack 45 pack bundles historically this tended to be the most popular pack bundle for players who are looking to expand their collection. This would go into effect starting September 26. Limited historic events will be available from time to time for players who prefer drafting as a way to expand their collection. We'll have more inf information on entry price for historic drafts later on. So that's just info for those of you who like to do drafts. Uh, the roadmap. So this is just the roadmap. If you're interested in this, I'll leave a link to this article down below in case you want to check out the roadmap stuff. I'm not going to go through this, uh, but overall, that's pretty much all of the updates that are going to be happening in terms of uh, how rotation is going to affect MTG Arena um, starting on, I believe, the 26th of September. So point it out. But I don't know what. Other than that, <laughs> go ahead and let me know what your thoughts and your opinions are about uh, Throne of Eldraine the new rotation, how it's going to affect MTG and stuff, especially the renewal rewards. I'm not particularly sure what I'm supposed to feel about this just yet. Go ahead and let me know what your thoughts are about that in the comment section down below. But if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and smash that like button. It's the best way to know when, uh, if you enjoy videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Chaos Nation, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.